12 Kingdoms is an anime I've been meaning to watch for quite some time and I finally found it on Japanese Netflix last year and gave it a watch. But it came out back in 2002, around the time I started watching anime, so I've always kind of considered watching it. However, I put it off until now because a lot of these reviews that I read for the show, despite many of them being uh, in praise of the show, they all had the common thread that uh, it just ended kind of abruptly and having been burned by Berserk back around the time I started watching anime, I really didn't want to get into that kind of show again only to be screwed over by the ending. So I put it off until now, there was always something else I would rather have watched instead of 12 Kingdoms over the past like 17 years. Finally gave it a shot and I gotta say, that is a whole load of bullshit. The ending is perfectly fine. Yeah, it does end at the end of like a minor arc. And if you are a fan of the show, I'm sure you want to continue watching it forward. However, it ended at the end of an arc, a perfectly good and appropriate place to end. And the show lasted like five or six arcs. It was a pretty long show of 45, 46 episodes. That is nothing to really complain about. Just because you want to watch more doesn't mean it ended at a particularly bad spot. It's kind of like Durarara, how so many people at the end of the first season of Durarara complained that it just ended so abruptly. They just want to continue watching more and more and more. So I put it off until those later seasons came out. However, the ending of the first season was perfectly fine. And uh, 12, 12 Kingdoms is basically the same thing. It's nothing to complain about. Don't uh, put off watching it just because you're afraid it's going to end at a stupid point. Anyway, um, do, uh, 12 Kingdoms, it's part of the isekai genre, one of those shows where they take you to another world. Um, oftentimes it's like a fantasy world, as, such as the case in 12 Kingdoms, or it's like a video game world nowadays. These days, the isekai genre has really exploded, but there were plenty of shows like it back in the day that people just want to forget about just because they want to criticize the isekai genre. But here we are. Um, this girl, she's like a normal high school girl except for like a few things where she always felt a little bit uncomfortable because everyone around her was kind of fake and uh, she her hair color was kind of different so she didn't blend in. But other than that, perfectly normal high school girl. She meets a guy um, who like drags her into this uh, different world after being chased by magical beasts and she ends up being prophesied to become one of the kings of these 12 kingdoms. Anyway, the cool thing about this world, um, at first you think it's kind of dull, you look at the world map, uh, right from the, uh, the opening sequence, you think, well, this is kind of dull, the whole world is perfectly symmetrical, looks like perhaps they didn't put a lot of thought into this, but actually they put a ton of thought into this world, the world is really well developed, just because the world map is a little bit boring, once you look at the, the details of the local maps, you look at the way um, the power structures are set up in the world, you look at the mythology that's used in create, choosing the kings, choosing the beasts that choose the kings, the center of the world where they have uh, all these divine beings who are, the whole mythology system is really cool, the power structure, the kingdom system is really cool, um, a lot of it's borrowed from like ancient Chinese mythology, so that's really well planned out, and even some of like the local rules and traditions, like one time there's this old man explaining to the main character how, um, you know, they measure the different plots of lands in this world and how they're divided up so that everyone can farm a little and eat a little bit and how they can survive in winter, it's really, really well planned out in that sense. So the whole environment, the whole um, world, it is really interesting. And 12 is like the perfect number of kingdoms. Although they didn't really get time enough to explore all of the kingdoms in this country, you get to see a good bit of like half of them. And you get a good idea of how developed this world could possibly be if you want to continue reading the light novels or the manga or anything like that. Anyway, um, the main character is also really cool after a certain point. At the beginning of the show, she is a total pussy. Um, kind of annoying because she's like told to fight and she's like, I don't want to fight. It's like Shinji in Evangelion almost. But uh, pretty quickly, surprisingly quickly, she develops into, into a character who's willing to fight. And after that, she develops into a character of really like strong moral character. Someone who you can really like get behind, someone you can really respect. So that's really cool about this show. Um, and... Um, one of the other cool things about the show is that it does get really brutal and really cruel in a way that you often see in shoujo anime over shonen anime. Like there are certain lines that shonen anime won't cross as far as like cruelty and brutality go, but this show and some other shoujo anime I've seen or at least anime aimed at girls that I've seen, they really really get punishing on some of these characters. They some of this stuff is really kind of dirty some Sometimes it's really gross, sometimes it's really sadistic, but uh, you do get some of that in this show. Anyway, one of the uh, things that kind of sucks about this show is that 
well, it's not such a bad thing, but for me at least, like, there's a lot of feelings talk, a lot of the um, uh, things in the show, a lot of the themes in the show are kind of about overcoming your weaknesses, overcoming your negative feelings, and it gets bogged down a little too much in the feelings talk sometimes. I guess that's something that's going to be pretty common in the shoujo type of anime, even the action-based shoujo anime, but it's kind of forgivable and understandable. Also, probably the toughest thing about the show for me, and this is completely my fault. You see, I've recently, I've been challenging myself to watch a lot more shows in Japanese only. Uh, sometimes on Netflix, I'll watch Japanese shows with Japanese subtitles. And this is probably the single hardest show I've tried to challenge only in Japanese, even with a subtitle. So much of it's hard to understand, in large part because it is based on this old-fashioned, like, language system, old-fashioned system. So, like, there's all these uh, really polite, formal words that I couldn't understand at all. There's a lot of mythology, um, mythological type of words that I couldn't understand a lot. A lot of show specific terminology that I couldn't understand at all. So it was kind of tough to really follow what's going on. And it was extremely kind of mentally taxing to watch the show to the point where in the entire like 45 or 46 episode run of the show, I don't think I've watched two episodes consecutively throughout the whole thing. And this factors in a large part in my decision to give this show a grade of a single plus. It is, I'll, I'll perfectly give it the uh, the benefit of the doubt here, it's probably my fault that I watched it in this manner that made me enjoy it less, but, you know, I had to take on that challenge of watching it in Japanese to improve my own Japanese. So, yeah, that is, I'm willing to say it's partially my fault, but the show also, I think it could have moved at a faster pace, and it could have been, you know, a little bit easier to understand, a little more accessible to the common viewer, and perhaps, sure, I'm foreigner, I don't speak Japanese natively, but probably to little kids as well, like, they probably couldn't understand a lot of the terminology in this show either. Um, anyway, so, overall, it's a great show, you know, great characters, a little too bogged down in the feeling stuff, and some arcs were better than others, but a perfectly good show. If you have been curious about the show for a long time, I do recommend checking it out. Your mileage may vary, but it is a perfectly good show, and, um, you know, you may like it more than I did. Anyway, check it out. See you next time.